books, books. I like books. I'm going to read them all. Hi readers, Chris here. Welcome to my channel where I review fantasy, Stephen King, all sorts of books. And today I'm going to be doing my December wrap up and my January TBR. December. Whew, December was a wild month. Uh, obviously, holidays were really busy. It was also really busy at work. Like, we lost someone on our team, so had to pick up some extra uh, work there. And then I got sick at the end of the month. So all of that to say, I technically only finished two books in December. Technically. Technically, technically. However, as of the moment of filming this video, I have finished everything that was on my December TBR. So Therefore, I'm just counting all of those books as December. Even though I technically didn't finish them in December, I have now. I've moved on to new books, and I'm really excited about it. So, how was my reading in December? I liked all of the books that I read in December. However, none of them, like, blew me away. None of them ended up on my favorites for the year list. None of them did. That doesn't mean I didn't like them and didn't enjoy them. I did. It's just, well, I'll get into it. So, yeah, I'm going to do what I always do, rank my books from least favorite to favorite. So I'm going to jump right in with my seventh favorite book of December, Omen of Ice by uh, Jews Accardo. This is an Owl Crate book box. It's super pretty, and I was hoping that it would give me, you know, some wintry, icy vibes, and it definitely did do that. So the setup of this book is we have fae and we have humans, and the humans, aka the druids, are trained since birth to be these warriors and basically protect the fae. So we have a young druid girl. She gets assigned to protect this fae, who just happens to be a fae prince. And of course, he doesn't want her there, but she has a job to do. Shenanigans ensue. I was really looking forward going into this book with like, you know, humans are usually depicted as being not as strong or as powerful as fae. So I was really looking forward to that dynamic. And unfortunately, it left me feeling a bit disappointed for this girl who is supposedly this warrior. She seems to get her butt kicked quite a lot. Um, so I didn't really see her get to be a warrior like she claims she is, but you don't really see it. So there was that. And then there's also kind of this will they, won't they type romance. And... It pretends to be a slow burn, but pretty much as soon as these two characters meet each other, they're like, ooh, how you doing? And like, yes, they don't act on it. In that sense, it's a slow burn, but in terms of them actually liking each other, that happens pretty quickly. So that didn't really work for me either. So overall, this one left me a bit uh, disappointed, but uh, that's okay. They can't all be winners. My sixth favorite book of the month is going to be Hidden Sea or Hide and Sea by Gregory Maguire, The Tale of the Once and Future Nutcracker. And yes, obviously I picked this for December because it's about a nutcracker. If you've read any of Gregory Maguire's other books, he's most well known for Wicked, his stories can get a little weird, and this one definitely gets a little weird. Like, the whole, like, first three-fourths of the book is about this young boy named Dirk, uh, Dirk Dosselmeyer. So he ends up becoming Grandpa Dosselmeyer. And it kind of goes through his young life, how he may or may not have come into contact with some woodland spirits, how he kind of becomes a toy maker. And it's not until the very end that you finally meet like Fritz and Clara and there's a, a rat king, that type of stuff. I really enjoyed the ending of this book. I really enjoyed where more of that classic Nutcracker stuff kind of came in. But for the first three-fourths of the book, I was just kind of like, meh, this is okay, and it's a little weird. My fifth favorite book of the month is The Death Cure by James Dashner. This is the 
third and final book in the Maze Runner series. And yes, I know that there are prequels, but in the original series is a trilogy, and this is the third one. We finally get some answers here. Like, there are so many unanswered questions going into this book, and we finally get them. We finally get some. And I think that this is a pretty satisfying ending to this series, because basically, if you're not familiar with this series at all, it's cut, this world is a dystopian world where everyone has been infected with this disease called the flare, and there's no cure for it. And allegedly, everything that's happened to the characters, being trapped in a maze, having to fight all these creatures, like all of this stuff supposedly has been to get this cure. And obviously our main character is kind of struggling like he doesn't really understand how all these horrible things can lead to a cure that might save people and i like the way that this book wraps up i think it wraps up in a satisfying way i don't think that this series is like the best thing i ever read i could definitely see why it's popular especially book one I think, honestly, the first book, The Maze Runner, is the best of the series, and I don't think the sequel or this one are as good as that first book, but it's still a satisfying ending to the series. My fourth favorite book of December is Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Maas. I really have been loving this series, Throne of Glass. I have not particularly cared for, well, I've had some issues with some of uh, Sarah J. Maas's adult books. But this YA fantasy, I've really been enjoying. However, as much as I've liked this series, I do have to say, this is book five. This is my least favorite book in the series so far. It's still a really good book, and it's still really enjoyable. But to me, we've been following this main character here for four books now, and I feel like she is not the main character in this story, especially in the first half of the book. There is so much time spent on side characters and side plots and yada, yada, yada. And as much as I love some of those side characters, it's like, that's not why I fell in love with the series in the first place. I fell in love for our strong female character at the center, and I don't feel like she was in this book enough. Also, this book is starting to do uh, the Sarah J. Moss thing where characters like plan these elaborate things and don't tell you so you don't get to find out about it until like later and on one hand I get as a plot device that can be exciting because it's like a twist like oh this character had plotted this all along I personally don't like that though like I like to know things I want to follow her as she thought of this plan, as she implemented this plan, like, I want to be in her brain. I don't want to be the other characters that have no idea what's going on. I want to be with her. So hopefully that doesn't continue throughout the rest of the series. Um, still love the series overall, still enjoyed this book. It's just not my favorite in the series so far. My third favorite book of December is From a Buick 8 by Stephen King. This book actually surprised me. I went into this book with very low expectations because I've already read a Stephen King book about an evil car, Christine, and I love that book. I love Christine. Love it, love it, love it. So going into this one, I was kind of like, eh. I kind of already had my mind made up that I wasn't going to like it and it wasn't going to be as good. However, I actually ended up really liking it. So basically, there is this Buick that this police troop mysteriously finds. They don't know where it came from or who it belonged to, so they keep the Buick at their barracks, and all this weird stuff starts happening. People disappear, certain things appear, like, and obviously the car is dangerous, but Again, they don't really have a lot of answers to their questions. Now, enter a young boy whose father had been killed in a hit-and-run, drunk-driving type accident. The barracks has kind of, like, you know, taken ownership of him, stepped in for his father. They're taking care of him, and they start to teach him about the Buick, tell him the stories. So this book is told in a series of flashbacks. So... 
A, I think it's really well written from that perspective. B, it's like really creepy. C, it's like really exciting because you don't know what the Buick is going to do next or, you know, what's going to happen. So I ended up really liking it. The one thing I will say is that I do wish I had known going into this um, that there was a really disturbing scene with an animal, unfortunately, because that is a big trigger of mine. Um, I'm sure I've mentioned that before. Like, I don't care about humans at all, but if anything happens to an animal, like, it crushes my soul. So I wish I had known that going in so I could have either skipped that part or just kind of, you know, glazed over it. So if you are someone that is triggered by that, um, just be aware of that uh, going in because I wish I had known. All right, my second favorite book of December is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. I had heard so much about this book and I know so many people have read it and Yes, it is everything people say it is. It's cozy, it's cute, it's warm, it's sweet, it's all of those things. However, I do struggle a bit because as cozy and as cute as it is, it's not 100% what I wanted. And I recognize that that is a me problem. It's not a book problem. That is a me problem. But this book is very simple. It is very simple. And I did not know how simple it was going into it. I think at about the halfway mark, I remember like literally stopping reading and thinking to myself, is this it? Is this really it? Is this all this book is about? Yes, that was it. That is all this book is about. And I think I had it hyped up so much in my head that I wanted something more and I didn't get that. So yes, I really loved this one. And I think that for what it is, it definitely does its job. But I couldn't put it as number one because it it wasn't my favorite. <laughs> it was not my favorite. Doesn't mean I don't like it, don't appreciate it. It's just not 100% what I wanted. Something that did give me what I wanted, though, is Silver in the Bone by Alexandra Bracken, my favorite book of December. And again, this book did not blow me away. It's not mind-blowing. However, compared to everything else, it is my favorite. So this is a King Arthur-inspired story. We have a young girl named Tamsin, and she has been raised in this society of magic users. And there's something called Hollowers, where basically they kind of go out and look for magical artifacts, either on behalf of other sorcerers or sorceresses, et cetera, et cetera. Now, Tamsin has a brother, Cable, and he is cursed to like turn into this, this beast. He can't control it. She's trying to save him. They were abandoned by their parents and their guardian, this guy Nash, who kind of raised them, has been missing for a long time. So long story short, her and Cable, through a series of events, end up on this magical, mystical island, the island of Avalon, which is supposed to be this paradise. But when they get there, the place is like totally, um, it's totally messed up. It's like cursed with all these terrible creatures. There is a society of sorceresses that live there that are trying to like protect the island, but they're trapped there with all these horrible things. So the majority of the book is Tamsin trying to figure out what the heck happened to Avalon. Can they help save it? What happened to Nash? Is she ever going to find him? Like, what's really going on? There is magic, there is mystery, there's romance, there's action. And this book actually goes a lot darker than I thought it was going to. Like, there is some dark stuff in here, especially towards the end of the book. There is one scene in particular that, like, it was quite dark and it was quite shocking. And I loved it. Like, I, I've really been into, like, dark fantasy recently. Maybe not recently. I've always been into that. But in particular, dark stories are really, like, speaking to me. And this one definitely gives me all the dark vibes that I was looking for. Yes, there are some things in here that are, like, you know, 
typical YA fantasy tropes, especially when it comes to the romance, but overall, I thought this was a really fun new take on Arthurian legends, and I had a really good time with it. So now I'm going to move on and talk about January, and one of the things I decided is that I don't want to put too much pressure on myself to read. I'm still in the process of kind of putting together all of my bookish goals for the year, but one of them, sneak peek here, is going to be to read less. And yeah, I know that probably sounds crazy, but here's the thing. I really challenged myself to read more the past couple years. And while that's been fun and it's been fun to read more books and challenge myself, I'm like constantly jumping from one book to the next and I feel like I read so fast sometimes that I don't have enough time to like really sit with a book and think about it and enjoy it. So as much as I get jealous of other people who can read 10, 20, 30 books a month, it's just, it's just not me. And it's never going to be me. And I need to learn to be okay with that. So from now on, six is going to be my max. I'm not going to read more than six books a month for 2024. So that did mean that I had to get rid of a category that I would normally read from, and I decided to get rid of my middle grade fantasy category. It's not that I'm never going to read a middle grade fantasy because I could pull it as a rando book or someone could recommend it to me, but the six categories that I am sticking with are my reader recommendation, my Stephen King book, my adult fantasy, my rando, my YA fantasy, and then an Owl Crate book box book. So without further ado, let's jump in with my reader recommendation of January. I am starting out this year with Dealing with Dragons by Patricia Weird. This was sent to me by uh, Cjar. So Cjar, I know I already thanked you over on Bookstagram, but thank you so much for sending this book to me over the holidays. It really just... It really made me happy. It was such a nice surprise. So, of course, I have to read it. Uh, so, Dealing with Dragons, that's my reader pick for January. Of course, I am continuing my Stephen King journey with Everything's Eventual. This is a short story collection. Um, I don't know anything about this one, really, other than it's a short story collection, and it was next on my publication date list. My adult fantasy for the month is going to be Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. I've never read a book by Alex E. Harrow, but I know they're popular. Um, really excited about this one. First of all, it's gorgeous with this pretty purple sprayed edges and it's cool, uh, you know, reversible dust jacket. I love purple, so it really speaks to me. This is kind of like a haunted house type uh, adult fantasy. And I've only read three chapters so far, but I gotta say, it's early, but I'm digging it. Next up for my YA fantasy, I am reading Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I have been waiting forever <laughs> to read the sequel to Six of Crows, which was one of my favorite books last year. I don't know why it took me so long to pick this up, other than, again, there's just so many things to read, but... I want to read the sequel so I can finally wrap up this duology, so Crooked Kingdom, here we come. And then finally, I have my Owl Crate book box pick of the month, and that is Midnight Strikes by Zeba Shanaz. I have no idea what this book is about. Uh, something to do with time travel. That is literally the extent of my knowledge. But I thought it kind of gave me like a New Year vibe, you know, Midnight Strikes, it's a new year. So I thought that would be kind of a fun read for uh, the new year. Um, again, have no idea what this book is about other than time travel. So sometimes it works out in my favor to go into books blind. Sometimes it does not. So we'll see how this one uh, shakes out. So there you have it. Those are my six books for January. Roscoe is very excited to start the new year. Aren't you, buddy? Yeah, thanks, Roscoe. 
while he's doing that, now I want to know from you, what are you starting off the year reading? What are you going to be reading in January? Are you going to try to read more? Are you going to try to read less? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already, please subscribe to my channel for more bookish stuff and more furry friends coming your way soon. All right, everyone. Happy reading. Can you say happy reading, Roscoe? Yes, I know. Thank you.